Hello, I'm William. Today I'm going to be trying to install a new rear window to the full hard top of my Series 1 1958 Land Rover. I've purchased new rubber seal. As you can see the cross section there. Obviously I had to order a special 6mm one uh, from uh, proprietary uh, rubber ex moulding extrusion manufacturer and they sent it all to me. As you can see when uh, I demonstrate later you put that in the groove and insert the locking strip and it, and it helps to push if you can just see it helps push that into the groove to lock in um, the uh, new window. Now this is the uh, bottom part of the side back panel and this is where the roof will attach. Um, what you have to do is ensure that you put the rubber where the start stop joint is towards the bottom um, so that you don't get any uh, leaks if you were to put it on the top. So I'll just insert that now. Ensure that you've got a nice straight cut, clean 90 degree cut uh, on your rubber. I use a, a very sharp knife for this. I, um, for appearance sake, I'm putting the locking strip on the inside so that I have a nice clean line on the outside. So I start halfway along the bottom there and I feed it around all the way around. It's uh, quite a chilly day for the rubber and uh, it's a little bit like wrestling with an anaconda. I've never, apart from the other side, I've never actually done this before. So I'm learning as I go along. I did watch one or two clips from YouTube before starting this and nearly all the ones I saw uh, involved uh, using two people. I don't have that luxury here today. So Now the next thing to do is to mark approximately one quarter of an inch here above the joint. This is so that any shrinkage, once I make them together, will be taken up because I, I've given a good overlap. Uh, it will butt together very well. The next thing I do, I've marked it here with my thumb and I'm going to use a block of wood and a very sharp knife to cut um, it across in a uh, level fashion. my mark. This is sharp. All I'll need. And I'll just move that down so that you can see. There's my mark. And I want a nice square cut. If you've got a very sharp knife, you'll find that you can do that very easily, as you can see. Now all I've got to do, at this stage, is to press it back in. And if I work that end first now... It might 
be a little bit tight, but I prefer it tight than to get loose later. I think you can see we have a nice tight joint, that'd be even tighter once uh, the locking strip goes in and uh, next thing for me to do is uh, to insert the glass, or in this case uh, the plastic. My next task is to peel off the protective backing, I've uh, already done one side, Stops the, uh, it's to stop the plastic scratching, obviously. As you can see I've chamfered off the edges all the way around to make it easier for the rubber um, to slide over. I'm now using a proprietary um, glass cleaner uh, which will give me necessary lubrication. You can also use uh, a mixture of uh, washing up liquid with water and uh, just spray it on in and around the rubber. I do it quite liberally, it's not going to harm the rubber this. And it won't harm the plastic. Yeah. Try and insert the rubber as much as we can into there. Now this is the tricky part, and we have to use our pressure on the back whilst making sure that we push this piece of rubber on the inside out. I'm going to, you could use a hard piece of uh, plastic. I'm going to just use this piece of knife with the bone end and just push the lip of the rubber whilst at the same time exerting a force on the plastic and it's starting to go in now all the way around to insert the filler strip. Uh, as you see I've um, upended the panel uh, so that I can apply pressure down onto the filler strip with my wrist and the tool. Apply liberal amounts of lubrication. going to lubricate the filler strip. I find it does help. Now, because my joint is this end on the main rubber, my filler strip joint will be up here. I'll insert the tool into the groove. slightly. Now you want the domed end uppermost and I insert that into the tool. That's what I'm doing. Putting that putting that into the groove and then inserting the rubber that way.
once you've got a start it's a question of just keeping a good tight grip on your tool and rubbing it round and if you've lubricated it well this corner's given a bit of problem so I'm coming back again there there that's it it's going in nicely a little bit more lubrication the corners may give you a little bit of a problem they're always tighter. Again. I hope you can see that. It's working its way around nicely. As you can see, it's gone straight over that tight joint there without any problems. And here I go. Coming down now. Last corner coming up. I'm just going to move. The camera's in the way. And you need a little bit of extra grip. And we're nearly there to meet up with the other end. Now what I do now, going with a sharp knife, I can see where my join is just here. And uh, I'll just give it probably an eighth of an inch over so it's nice and tight when it goes back in I've got to chamfer it inwards so that I've got a nice neat finish come back a little bit with my tool there Steady cut. Up oh, the tool and the last the last part. Obviously I have to use something else to press it home. And hey presto, it's in now. Well, there you have it. I think you'll agree. It's turned out to be a nice, neat job. That's from viewed from the inside. And here we have it. Here we have it viewed from the outside. I'm quite happy with that beautiful job. I'm not a professional, and like I say, it's the first time I've attempted to do this. Good luck with your restoration. Thank you for watching.